Hello, Taras here. Welcome to another episode of our running series, What is a Coral? Today, we're gonna to be straying a little bit from the pure fleshy, fleshy soft corals, and we're gonna be entering into the beginning forefronts of the hard corals. Once again, we're gonna be revisiting kind of a greater Great Barrier Reef family. So this is corals that are in the wild, found around Tonga, the Solomons, of course, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, Philippines, etc. This is the Euphilidae. These are the frog spawns, the torches, and the hammer corals. These are really neat because they offer a good deal of flow and presence to the aquarium. And they have these large charismatic feeding tentacles that really present a lot of great avenues for flow and a diversity of texture in the aquarium. In my own humble experience, this is a coral because of its fleshy attributes, even though it is a hard coral, and does require levels of calcium and alkalinity, maybe not a little less dependent on high levels of like a Montipora, but it really does depend and utilize high levels of magnesium and does benefit from both feeding uh, with those large charismatic tentacles and from magnesium dosing as well. So we try and keep the concentration for these guys around 1350 ppm to 1500 ppm concentration of magnesium, just to make sure that they have lots of uh, magnesium to make all that fleshy, fleshy parts of their, uh, of their body. These guys, again, really charismatic feeders in my experience with the ones that I deal with in my service clients tanks. I like to drop big clumps of seaweed extreme or even some Hikari frozen fish products directly on the coral and watch as they observe. So for some more tips and insights into this very robust and charismatic family of corals, the Euphilidae, let's check in with Eli in the trenches. Hey there, Eli again, uh, here to show you an up close look at the Euphilia corals. Like Tarash just said, this includes the torch corals, frog spawn corals, and hammer corals. And these definitely tend to be a fan favorite, kind of around the board. Uh, definitely a lot of people have an Euphilia obsession. It's kind of hard not to like all the waviness that they kind of add to the tank, all the movement, decently easy growth, and kind of some really cool colors. You can get some purples, greens, uh, sometimes some gold variants that kind of add a lot of color, a lot of movement to the tank, and, and it's kind of hard to beat that. For some of the beginners, this can kind of be a daunting subject when you consider especially the torch corals, where we're looking at things like New York Knicks torches or golden torches. Uh, which can fetch upwards of $200 a head. However, these are definitely a good coral to consider uh, as an easier LPS coral, something to get you into the uh, stony coral side of the hobby versus a lot of the soft corals that we've been talking about previously. Generally, with the corals like the hammers and frog spawns, you can get some of the more common colors for a, a bit cheaper, maybe $20 to $40 a head, and they tend not to be too picky. Like Taras mentioned earlier, you do want to make sure you're focusing on alkalinity, calcium, making sure that your parameters are stable in your tank so that these corals can build a good skeleton beneath them. Um, however, uh, they tend to be an easier coral when you want to get into some of the hardy corals. As far as placement goes and demands of these corals, generally you want to go for a place that's kind of got some moderate to higher light and moderate flow. These corals tend to like a decent amount of flow and you can get some of the best uh, looks out of this coral with a decent amount of flow. But too much flow can kind of uh, irritate the coral and sometimes cause them to bail heads where they will actually lose heads off of the skeleton. Generally in the hobby we deal mostly with the branching varieties of all these corals, but each of the representatives of this family also have what's called a walling type in which the skeleton underneath them will grow kind of a, a tracking shape to it almost like a tracky coral or a fox coral some of these corals that grow like a really long extended skeleton that would have multiple mouths in a single polyp however it's a lot more common to see corals like these ones which are the branching types where you basically have uh, heads that start to grow form get a little bit larger and they'll split in the middle and you end up with two heads sometimes you get branches off the sides in terms of aggression some of these corals can tend to to be a little more aggressive than other corals, so placement can kind of be a little bit of a hassle. When we start to look at the torch corals, these tend to be the most aggressive of the bunch, um, and it's generally recommended to keep these uh, within a few inches of any other coral. You don't want them to touch other corals because they have a very potent sting. However, torch corals can generally touch other torch corals without problem. The rest of the euphilia, the hammers and frog spawns, they can generally touch each other, um, regardless of whether it's a hammer or a frog spawn, without much issue. However, they might tend to sting other corals if they're placed too close to them as well. On occasion, you might also run into hybrids of these corals. A lot of times you'll hear people refer to a framer coral, which just is basically a hybrid between a frog spawn and a hammer coral, where it looks mainly like a hammer, but might have some branching uh, toward the tips. 
which is kind of the general distinction between the two. Otherwise, these can be a very rewarding and fun coral to keep. Again, they add a lot of color, a lot of movement to the aquarium, so they tend to be a really great coral to add to the tank. As always, let us know in the comments if there's any other corals that you want us to talk about in our videos. Thank you for watching, and uh, keep on reefing.